What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to have a discussion why most of America is gonna miss the great wealth transfer. And we're gonna have a really, really deep conversation because one of the things that I consistently see is the lack of accurate and timely data. And even more importantly, the abdication of due diligence, the abdication of actually doing some stuff. This video is brought to you by Glendon Cameron School, where we're gonna get into foundational fundamental education on how to start a business and how to manage money. Link is below, and this Sunday at 4 p.m., we're gonna have a live training talking about why your business needs to make money. All of those links should be in the first comment below. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what generated this video. I've been thinking about these thoughts and uh, there, it's in my comment section. I had someone said, my math was wrong, all right? With the trucking business. In the video, it's like, why Glenn and Cameron's not getting in trucking. And I was talking about buying 10 trucks. And this person said, you don't buy 10 trucks. Correction, numb nuts, you can't buy 10 trucks. And this is one of the things that I consistently get from the moist men crowd. Look, look, I'm about to say something that's gonna be completely insensitive to your weak little ass. I'm fucking better than you. Deal with it. I'm better than you. I got more money look better, date hotter chicks, have a better life. If you can't deal with that, if you're at home throwing stuff at the computer screen, about to lose your damn mind, you are one weak little bitch. When I was growing up, we had an understanding that there were some people who were better, but most of you MGTOW, red pill, incel fools can't deal with it because right now there's a fat fucker at home five foot five, 300 pounds, feeling that he should be able to fuck the type of chicks that I'm fucking simply cause he exists. And this is the mindset because this fool was going off saying, you know, your math was wrong. And it, this is something that let me know this fool wasn't even in trucking. Why would I want to own 10 trucks when I can make a million with two? Let me repeat that. Why would I want to own 10 trucks when I can make a million with two. This fool thinks that gross revenue is spendable income. If you have two trucks and you're grossing a million, you will be lucky to bring home 300,000. You might bring home 200,000 if your cost and overruns get out of control. So that's one of the reasons. Let's have this conversation. Okay. I have made a million, made $3 million from home, sitting on my ass. Why would I want to invest a lot of money in a business where I'm gonna make less money, I'm gonna work harder, that's hustling backwards. And a lot of you fools don't respect what I've done because this is one of the things. Uh, there's some new stuff that's coming up, the Art of Profit podcast and Savage Finance is coming back and I've changed pure money to the creator economy. So there's gonna be a lot of new content coming on new channels because, you know, a lot of you don't understand. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the audience. There is a group of people who appreciate, who feel informed, feel that they're learning stuff and they actually respect the things I've done. Love you guys. Shout out to the nerd tribe. And there's a group of you dumb fuckers who ain't never done shit in life, never accomplished shit in life, and you're just fucking haters. Anton Daniels, he's another dumbass hater. If he's using words he, like predator, I've never done anything predatory in my life. I did not go out getting young girls. I wrote ads on Craigslist and they came to me. Based upon the dumbass analysis of Anton Daniels, Apple, Coke, Ford, anyone that runs 
ads and commercials is conducting predatory behavior. And this brings a big, big point to why most of America is going to miss the wealth transfer. The lack to critically think, the lack of ability to critically think. Like this fool who was going back and forth with me and I just blocked him and deleted it because this would have been going on all day. Number one, productive, successful, engaged people don't go back and forth in the comments. You know who do, you know who do that? Losers. Because due to the lack of critical thought, their big currency is winning a straw man argument. Let's say you and I were in the bar and we just had this topic, whatever topic, and you were on the opposing side of my viewpoint and it became heated and you wanted to put hands on me simply because you wanted to be right and I made you look like a fool because I backed up my argument with facts and valid metrics. And this is one of the reasons that so many people are going to miss the wealth transfer. I can't say they're stupid. That would be not correct because there's plenty of smart people who do dumb things. What I'm going to say is they're uninformed, they're uneducated, and they're unseasoned, which by itself is not a sin. But the sin is they don't want to learn it. They don't want to know any better. They don't want to know any better. And this is why the average person is going to miss the wealth transfer because they're not investing time in productive things. This is why, like I was looking at People Magazine. When I was a kid, my mother used to get People Magazine. I forget because we would get them in the mail. And what is People Magazine? It is gossip. It is this rich person like here on YouTube. These videos do really well of wealthy people who have these huge, amazing closets. Two, 3,000 foot square foot closets with oodles of clothes and purses and shoes. And people invest a lot of time watching that. I like, you know what I've been listening? I've been listening to business podcasts, looking at business YouTube videos where I invest my time at some point in the future, I'm going to get a return. But if you invest your time in People Magazine, what Kim Kardashian is doing, that ain't going to make you no money. And this is the number one reason that most of the people are going to miss the wealth transfer because they invest a huge amount of time in things that don't produce a return. And for all you folks like, well, you, you lost credibility because you're not in the stock market. Let's talk about the stock market. Guess who owns 90% of the stock market? The top 10%. So the top 10% own 90 something percent of stocks, which means that most of America don't own that much stock. I was doing some Googling and I was like, how many people get rich from the stock market? And this, this is a trope that is consistently being pushed. There's this janitor and then there is um, this woman who had really low income who built these seven and eight million dollar stock portfolios. Okay. Um, one of the things that they failed to mention is during the time that they were buying these stocks, America went through and information, manufacturing, and cultural transformation. Like UPS, UPS has been around, UPS transformed. Uh, there's so many companies, Coca-Cola transformed. So not only did they pick the right stock, the company went through a amazing metamorphosis that only is gonna happen once in a lifetime. And that's something they leave out because, you know, he, he made a lot of money. He was in the stock market. The average person who buys single stocks typically loses money. The average person who gets into uh, options trading typically loses money. So 
the stock market. And let's go ahead and say it. If you know how to do options and futures and calls and puts, and you're really skilled in that, you can make money in any kind of market. But the market is down. The market has been down for almost two months. And once again, the average person feels, and once again, and this, this is going to be a really critical point that I need. Elon Musk is talking about this. So many people are trying to rent seek. Now what is rent seeking? Rent seeking is extracting money or value without giving value. So everybody's trying to rent streak. Like when I was doing my sugar baby uh, research, you know how many chicks tried to get money out of me for doing absolutely nothing? And during the period of time, I actually gave them the money and guess what? I never met any of these chicks that gave money. Never. I blew up 12 cash app accounts because when you do a charge back with your credit card, then cash app is going to block that account. So I got my money back, but here's what everyone's trying to do. Everyone's trying to get paid and not really doing anything to get it. Now I'm getting ready to put some content on the new YouTube channel, the creator economy and the creator economy has created some false perceptions like um, the first TikTok star, Demi, whatever her name was, she got like a hundred million people following her and she's doing her little dances and stuff. People have it in their minds that they could create a TikTok channel, a YouTube channel, an Instagram page, or a podcast for little or nothing and make millions. Now here's the rub some people do. But the majority of YouTube, because I'm seeing a bunch of brand new YouTube channels and I'm seeing them with 200, 300 subscribers. They may have one video pop. See, with, in the creator economy, you had to be first because a lot of people who had first mover advantage have done really well. They've got embedded in the Instagram algorithm. They got embedded in the YouTube algorithm. But people who are coming after these folks are struggling because everyone wants to make a lot of money without doing nothing. And th this, this, this is killing us as a country. Now there's a sector of people out there who work hard, who produce products, who run businesses and they get up every day and they go to work. I was watching one of these um, fire videos. This guy, he said literally after three months, he couldn't take it anymore. So you know what he did? He invested money in the stock market and he got to retire early. And then he took that time and guess what he did? He started a business. This man who was trying to run away from work, once he got into retirement, and then recently he talked about Fortunately for him, his business is doing well because his investments are sucking right now. He says he's just going to leave his investments alone and he's going to live off his business income versus living off his investment income. And I have a feeling in the future, a lot of these people who've been doing fire, who have these amazing portfolios, they're going to see their portfolios collapse in half. And then they're going to be like, what the fuck do I do now? Because once again, and this is one of my issues with the fire community. Um, number one, cheapness. I refuse to live a cheap life. Um, I have three cars and I was actually thinking about selling the convertible because I haven't driven it in months. Another day, I actually had to get the battery changed because the battery died and I was driving it. And it's actually a fun car riding around the land with the top now. So I may keep it. Um, I have three cars and it's just me. I live in a three bedroom place. It's just me. I am not living some sub standard lifestyle so I can sit on my ass in the future. That makes no sense to me. 
And once again, the goal for me is to get to where I'm at. The goal, should, you know, you can do what you want to with your time. That should be your aim, not to retire early so you can sit down and wake up and do nothing and be a bum. Because productive, hardworking people like Mr. Money, Mo this is what's funny. Mr. Money Mustache, I think his blog makes like a million a year. <laughs> and this is one of the things that you consistently see in the fire community, someone who achieves fire, they create a YouTube channel or a blog, and then they start making a lot of money because the financial niche, whether it's a blog, a YouTube channel or podcast, pays the highest CPM for advertisers. You wanna know why? Business, people who are listening to business podcasts are serious people. People who are looking at TikTok videos, you're doing your little dance. These are people who are consuming mental junk food. These are not people of substance. Like, once again, and there was a conversation I saw some people were having. Which audience is more valuable? Your TikTok audience or your YouTube audience? And every one of them said, hands down, YouTube audience. YouTube audience. Like, I don't even have a TikTok. I have no uh, plans on creating a TikTok. I think the platform's stupid. And, I, and from a um, mental, intellectual standpoint, I know what watching a bunch of TikToks does to your attention span. It fucking kills your attention span. And with a lack of critical thought, a short attention span, you're fucked. You're fucked. And this is where so many people, because people seek entertainment over education. And it's coined a new phase, new uh, edutainment, where they educate you and entertain you. Uh, I think Graham Stephan is supposed to be in that. And, you know, I look at a lot of YouTube and honestly, I become disenchanted with the broad preponderance of YouTube. I haven't become disenchanted with YouTube itself because I'm going to create a new YouTube channel, but I have become overwhelmingly dissatisfied with the majority of the content in the business sector, the majority of the content in the finance sector, because everyone is looking to turn an extremely small amount of money into a big payday. Invest $100, make you know this Shinu Ibu, this cryptocurrency. So many people have put two to $3,000 into it because I feel that for every dollar, you get like 100 Shinu Ibu. I don't know what it is. And they're, they're loading up on it and they're hoping that it reach a dollar because if it reaches a dollar, then they can, it's a big exit for them, right? Because like, let's see, if for your every dollar, you get 30, let's say 50 Shinu Inu. I don't know what it is. So once it reaches a dollar, for every dollar you put in, you get $50 back. So you put in $100, you get 5,000 back. You put in 1,000, you get half a million back or a million or something. I don't know the calculations, but one of the reasons that, um, cause you know, I was toying around with creating a crypto currency channel just for the, um, exposure. But here's my thoughts on crypto. 99% <coughs> of them are going to go to zero and why would I lead my people into a burning house? Because right now there's a bunch of people telling you buy the dip, dollar cost average. And I feel that a lot of people who are gonna do that, they're gonna regret that in the very near future because I think the market's gonna be down for a long time. And this is going to create some new content because let's say six months from now, the stock market's down. I guarantee you all of these fire videos are gonna take on a different tone because it's gonna be like, okay, 
Now, you, you should invest in the stock market, but you know, you shouldn't expect to get any returns 10, 20 years from now. Now, this is one of the reasons that um, I am not in the stock market. Um, if I had continued on my path, I would probably have a stock portfolio of about five or six million dollars right now. And based upon what people are doing, a lot of people have been losing 30, 30 percent. So I would have lost 1.5 million. And I don't have any faith in something that I can't control. And you just buy stock and you hope it appreciates, you watch the market. But a business, I can put my finger on it, I can put my hands on it, I can pull levers. There's things I can do to make it better. There's things I can control. So if I lose, I've messed up, which I can live with. But if I win, and I have won plenty of times, I've won plenty of times. And you know, the average American is going to miss the wealth transfer because they're just not in a position to take advantage because the way that they think, big, big, big thing. Number two, rent seeking. And number three, where they place their time. They're just not going to be able to make any money. You know what I was doing this morning? I'm getting ready to write another book. Let me explain to you this process. I, I'm not going to type the book. There's something called Dragon Naturally Speaking. And with Dragon, you can speak it. And if I do 3,000 words a day, I will be able to write a book in a month. Whereas the last book I wrote, Typing, and this was every day, took me almost four months. So from a workflow situation, I can write a lot of books using this software. And that's what I did. Now, the software, <coughs> it doesn't work with Mac. So I went out and bought a Windows-based laptop and a headset and a Word, and I'm going to set that up and I'm gonna start working on that book because I'm gonna launch the new podcast, The Art of Profit. And with the podcast, it's gonna include there's going to be a book. I'm going to put my wisdoms, insight, and thought processes into these books. And there will be a multitude of books. And then we will get into, because here's the whole gist of the art of profit. Based upon conventional business models, a 20% margin is considered good. Now, let's get into the numbers. If you are a company doing 10 billion a year and your profit margins are 20%, that's 2 billion. See, when they're making these presumptions and they're talking about these margins, they're talking about companies that make hundreds of millions to billions of dollars a year. See, when you own a small business, you cannot play that game. You cannot run on these pathetically slim margins. You, you cannot do it. So that's what the art of profit's gonna be about. It's like how to build a business that creates life-changing money. That's, you know, that's what it's gonna be about because once again, um, how many business owners can go to the Porsche dealership and leave with a paid off Porsche? No financing. And this is one of the things I consistently see with uh, YouTubers. And this is one thing that got me. Uh, there was a guy, Brian Jung, uh, CNBC did a profile on him. And apparently he made 3.7 million. Why is he financing a car? I don't understand it. I don't care if the car is 300,000. Why are you financing a car? I don't understand that. But then again, He's 25, and this is part of how these people get down. This is part of how they look at stuff. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things in the art of uh, profit. Fortunately, I got the domain already because some sorry sucker would buy the domain and then I would have to buy it from them. I hate that, I just hate that. 
So I got the domain name and give me a little time to get it all up. I got a mixer board coming. I got a cable, I got a mic that has a really deep, rich sound. And yeah, so we're gonna do the Art of Profit podcast. And it's not gonna be a video podcast. Uh, what I have found out in the past from podcasting is you feel freer when there's not a camera on you. So it's just gonna be an audio podcast. Uh, if I put the podcast on YouTube, there will not be any video. It'll just be like a static screen and it'll just be me talking. And I made that decision because um, one of the things I have noticed with podcasts is it's a different audience. It's a more serious audience. And a lot of people consume podcasts in various ways. So we're gonna get on that and I gotta get it all set up where I can put it where it's distributed with Apple and Spotify and Anchor. So I gotta set all that up. Cause I have, I mean, I could start today, but I wanna use this new mic and I need a cable. And then I wanna, I wanna make it a professional podcast. I don't just wanna do it like I do these YouTube videos. I want a dedicated intro. I want a dedicated outro. And then I'm gonna put commercials in there for my products. So I gotta strategize on how to put all that together. And then Savage Finance is coming back. I'm working on that. And Savage Finance is gonna be really, really different. I am not going to mess with credit cards or credit. That actually messed up my channel because the best video on there is how to get a loan with bad credit, payday lo uh, PayPal loan, and everybody's complaining because there are requirements. You know, you've got to use PayPal as your payment processor. You've got to get to a certain level of volume. And they're like, I don't want to do that, man. I just want them to give me money based upon my good looks and sp clean smelling cologne, right? So this, this uh, Savage Finance is gonna be really, really different and I might do a podcast for that. I may do a podcast for that because essentially uh, I got a room that's got a bunch of junk in it and I'm getting ready to clean that room out and that's probably gonna become my editing studio and then the room that I have everything in is probably gonna become the podcasting room. So we will see how that goes. But yeah, man, most of America, because once again, these folks are not stupid. That would be dismissive and incorrect, but they don't know what they don't know. And they're not interested in learning. Uh, there's this event called FinCon. I think I'm going to that this year because by then I it's supposed to be, I think in September. So by then I will have July, August, I'll have two months of the art of profit and i'll have two months of the new savage finance and i'm gonna make them lit i'm gonna make them litty working on it working on it but yeah the average person they're not positioned to make any money from the uh great wealth transfer not a penny not a dime nothing 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 so let me know your thoughts and opinions because once again, the lack of critical thought, the lack of deep introspective thought processes and the ability to mentally organize concepts, so many people could do it if they would invest the time, but they choose not to invest the time. They choose to remain woefully ignorant and they choose to remain mediocre. It is what it is.